Well, the Christian churches have been hounded to death by activists using new laws, especially against Christian schools, and it's costing them so much. I spoke about this problem to someone who's been worrying about this for some time, Catholic Archbishop of Sydney, Anthony Fisher. I spoke to him a short while ago. Archbishop Fisher, thank you so much for your time. How serious is this lawfare by activists against your church and your schools? Andrew, I think it's quite serious. I, everyone knows about the Julian Porteous case when the Archbishop of Hobart was taken to a tribunal simply for teaching what the Catholic Church teaches about marriage. Uh, we're hearing of more and more cases of people being threatened with litigation or tribunal processes beginning. And most uh, recently, the Ballarat Christian College case is a new one, but there have been a number of either actual cases begun or threats of cases. This is a kind of lawfare against the churches and church schools and institutions, saying if you don't tow the current secular line, if you try to be different in any way, you're going to be punished by being taken through the courts. Well, I want to pick up on the last, uh, the most recent example you've just mentioned. That's the teacher, Rachel Colvin, who says she was discriminated against, forced to quit the Ballarat Christian College because she refused to teach the ter church's line that same-sex marriage was wrong. Can you give us an example here? How much would it cost to defend just this one case? As we understand it, uh, the, the college has been quoted a quarter of a million dollars uh, for the initial defence, so that's just before the VCAT tribunal. If it goes on appeal, uh, you could expect as much or more again. Uh, the complainant, on the other hand, is getting it pro bono. It's not costing her a penny. And she's being backed by one of these uh, activist groups. So it really is a case of where uh, the accused organisation, or in this case a school, uh, is being bled dry. That's money that should be being spent in the classroom on the education of our kids, but instead is going to be wasted in uh, having to defend ourselves against this kind of attack. So when you get activist groups backing legal action against your church or your schools, that suggests there's actually an agenda here. This is not just about the specifics of the case. It, it really does look like that. The, the very fact that this teacher had resigned, as I understand it, uh, at the beginning of the year, and this action suddenly happens now. It just happens to be when the legislation regarding religious freedom is presently being uh, exposed for consultation and then there'll be uh, votes in the parliament. You, you have to think that there's a campaign going on here, that there's, these activist groups are actually out there looking for test cases, looking for, for people they can use for their bigger campaign. Now, the issue here, of course, is whether you should be free to teach church doctrine at your schools and free, obviously, to say, tell your teachers that they should teach that doctrine. Um, should Miss Colvin, on the other hand, be free to teach your students that she's actually in favour of same-sex marriage? Well, I think Miss Colvin should be free to find a school uh, that's in favour of that or in favour of all possible positions being taught. But if parents entrust their children to a Christian school, they expect the Christian positions on marriage to be taught. If it's to a Muslim school, the Muslim positions be taught. Uh, if it was a state school, perhaps uh, several positions would be taught. And so I think in respect for the parents, in respect for the children who want to be taught, presumably by teachers who are not phonies, but who really believe that the schools line when they're teaching there, out of respect for all the parties, even indeed the teacher's own conscience, we'd be saying, if you're not in favour of what your school teaches, you're probably in the wrong place. If you're comfortable with, with saying the sorts of things your school stands for, then you may very well be in the right place. It's, it's not that I'm saying this woman shouldn't be a teacher anywhere, but I think she was uh, a, a square peg in a round hole. And also, of course, you've got to keep faith with all the people who donate to that school or pay school fees uh, in order to get a Christian education, that that is indeed 
what they should be getting uh, a Christian education as defined by the church under whose wing this comes. Archbishop Anthony Fisher, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you to the viewers. Great to talk to you.